But um, what we're hoping to do during this 17-day tour is obviously get an opportunity of seeing lots of different wildlife. And um, this, is a, this is a lovely crimson sunbird, give you an example of some of the lovely small, small birds we have. But the beauty of, of Cambodia is that we actually have an opportunity to see a whole diverse range of, of different, different uh, disciplines of wildlife. This is a common flange tail, one of the more common but very impressive dragonflies that we would try and see, particularly around the, the, uh, the Angawak complex. And the beauty about the, uh, the temples, of course, is that um, uh, when we actually visit the temples, it's, we're actually in sort of a wildlife um, uh, reserve as well. So we have an opportunity of seeing primates and birds, most of which, unfortunately, I've had to march through just to keep on with the, with the timing. So I'm going to move on to a place called Tonley Sap which is a wonderful, large um, freshwater lake, which dominates the geography of uh, Cambodia. And we have a wonderful day where we spend some time on the, on the, on the lake and we get up at sunrise, hence the, um, the early sunshine, and we get a whole variety of amazing water birds, normally at very close range, such as this open bill stork. Uh, there's a wintering population of whiskered terns that we get nice and close to. And some of the wildlife that we'll see there will be fairly familiar to um, European birders, but some will not, and some will be rather special, such as this grey-headed fishing eagle, which sometimes we get extremely close to. Uh, the beauty is that here we go onto a floating village, uh, we capture a, a little smaller boat, uh, we go to the, the floating village on a larger boat, we get onto a smaller boat, and then it allows us to go around um, some of the narrow channels uh, around the lake, uh, particularly on, the, on one particular reserve, and as you can see, we often get very, very close to a whole multitude of water birds. That was a Chinese, um, <clears throat> the Chinese uh, pond heron and uh, other herons, which are around in good numbers, intermediate egrets, which people who go to Asia would probably be fairly familiar with, but quite similar to this great white egret that's all over Britain now. And the yellow bittern is, a, if you like, a version of the little bittern from Europe, and we often get close use of those. But again, a bit of familiarity. Um, so the gray heron has got a fantastic range right across Europe and Asia. And so we do experience uh, grey herons as well, just to show a little bit of something we do know about. Purple herons, great favourites almost uh, to any bird or almost anywhere in part of the world. And it's interesting that a lot of so-called birds we think of as European extend right out over and, and towards China and this side of Asia. Um, other birds we hope to see include, include the lesser adjutant stork, uh, which is quite a rare bird. Uh, but we also hope to see the greater adjutant stalk, which is even rarer. And really, Cambodia provides one of the few opportunities of seeing that and also the milky stalk, which um, is actually a very rare bird. And if you're into your bird watching, particularly the large birds, then there's a whole array of birds that really uh, are only relatively easy to see in Cambodia, even if you've traveled around Thailand and lots of other places. But in these other countries and Cambodia, you, you would be familiar with things like painted stalks, such as, such as these. Um, and at Tonley Sap, there's a very large colony of these painted stalks, which we get good views of, and we hope to find the rarest stalks actually in amongst them. But very graceful birds, gorgeous birds, and these, these feed around in the uh, diminishing uh, wetlands as the, as the hot sun um, comes out, um, making prey far easier for them to see. We get extremely close to things like spot-billed pelicans, um, a little bit smaller than the, the great white pelicans that some people may be familiar with. But we do get very close indeed, as you can see from this flight shot as it went over the, the front of the boat um, as we were traveling along. Not such a good shot, but an impressive bird is the stork billed kingfisher. And again, in an aquatic environment, of course, we're always going to see a whole host of kingfishers and allied birds, such as these blue tailed bee eaters, which actually occupy a whole range of habitats associated with uh, that desire to catch large flying insects. And um, anywhere in the world, it's always great to catch a swallow. And this is the Asiatic barn swallow. You can see that it's very similar to our barn swallow, just a few little differences. And they winter there in large numbers, obviously, for the, for the insects. So Tony sat, you could spend a good couple of days there, but sadly, we only have one day. So we try to sort of push as much into that as we possibly can. And the next area we go to is An Tram Piang uh, more, which is an interesting area. Uh, well, we hope to catch up with things such as saros cranes um, and a variety of owls. And here, this one is, uh, as you can probably see, um, is, a, is, a, is, a, is a large owl, which is hidden away. It's a spotted wood owl. And uh, on the day when we actually spend some time in this general area, we actually hope to see sort of half a dozen species of owl. Um, this is a similar, similar species uh, called the, uh, the, the brown wood owl. 
uh, which actually, again, hides well well in the woodlands, but the local guides seem to be pretty good at finding these birds for us. So we've always managed to see them. In a job to see this bird, you have to look very hard in the center of the screen to suddenly realize that there's a collared scops owl uh, sitting quietly in its little owl cove. Um, so a little bit of sunlight, a little bit of shadow, uh, and a half-hidden bird. So if you can see that, congratulations. And this open area also um, is, is an interesting area for um, a whole range of other creatures. And one of the things we sometimes see is the spotted eagle which we think of this one is probably the, the same as our European spotted eagle, although in actual fact it is possible it would seem to get Indian spotted eagle there as well. Um, as like the whole world over, this raptor was in, in disagreement with the, the large crow of the region, which of course is the large bill crow or, or jungle crow, which is a familiar bird in most of, um, most of Asia. Again, in open areas with sort of um, agriculture and broken trees, very flat area, um, we encounter black winged kites, uh, which in Europe now seem to be doing extremely well. Uh, it depends where you go in the world, whether they're called black wing kite or black shouldered kite, but in essence, um, we call them black wing kites generally. Um, Asia can be a noisy place due to cicadas. So we'll certainly see and hear plenty of these wonderful beasts that live at least seven years underground before they come out and emerge as an adult. And occasionally we'll find some receding water areas in this general area, which will look at things like comb duck, which is really good. And agriculture is a huge part of the Cambodian lifestyle. So most people live in a sort of third world regime and, um, and it's very hot and dusty when we go there in the, in the early year, but a great time to actually look for wildlife and we'll see plenty of cattle. Uh, chestnut, chestnut cat bee eater is a forest specialist that we'll see uh, in some of the areas we go to. Uh, particularly when we go to um, uh, some of the areas um, uh, of woodland and the uh, dry um, woodland areas, which, have, which flood during the, the, the wet season. Um, so here we've got rufous tailed starlings, and the starlings actually do make up quite a large group of birds in, in Cambodia, so we'll probably see about nine or ten species. And the trip overall, we expect to see sort of round about just over 300 species of bird, and normally around about sort of 12 or 15 species of identified mammal. Uh, common minor, <laughs> if people do travel to, um, to Asia, they'll be fairly familiar with this bird. And we do tend to see them in decent numbers, of course. And uh, the crested serpent eagle, which uh, I think Matt has already showed us a shot of one of these. This is a younger bird, uh, not quite as good looking as, as Matt shot, I don't think. Um, mammals uh, so can, sometimes can be hard to come by, but when we do find them, it's rather exciting, such as these, these gore or gar, how you want to um, say them, which is a, a forest cow or cattle, very, very heavy uh, cow. Um, there was an endemic um, cow, forest cow to, to Cambodia, but sadly that's now extinct. But there are still small numbers of these, these gore, which we came across one night, which is all very exciting. Uh, there's a whole range of different lizards. Um, and we do see quite a lot of them, including these, um, these tree-loving types, which are quite large and can sometimes be half a meter in length with their, with their tail. And we do have an opportunity of seeing sort of some animals as well as simply birds and insects, and there's plenty of culture. And at one site in particular, as we're moving around, uh, we hope to see northern tree shrew, which we did cheat a bit because we put some rice on the bird table and the, the, this tree shrew, which I'd never encountered before, came down to have a little feast. Um, striped tip babbler is very typical of the understory babblers that we encounter in this part of the world. There's a bird that's got a fairly uh, large distribution. And in some of the, um, in the diptera carp forests, we hope to actually come across a whole range of different bird species, such as this gray headed canary flycatcher. And yes, it's that same bird table again, but at this time it's a red billed uh, magpie, um, one of the beautiful exotic Asiatic magpies. So much so that I always have a job of getting the tail in the shot it's so long. Um, Prinias um, make up a, a quite a, a complex group of small birds, um, but this is a rufescence prinia. Uh, they're all quite difficult to see, but small buzzy warbler-like birds uh, that we hope to encounter in some decent numbers. And also uh, the rufous bedded woodpecker uh, drills its holes almost in a sapsucker way and then goes back to them. So if you can find the holes on a tree, uh, this much sought after bird can be found simply by revisiting the, uh, the drilled holes. Uh, rufous winged buzzard is a small buzzard which inhabits woodlands and we like to see those in, again in the same sort of forest area and in this same environment we'll be looking for things like giant ibis, uh, white-shouldered ibis, which and the giant ibis is Cambodia's national bird, uh, one of the rarest birds um, in the world now um, but doing reasonably well with some really good conservation efforts and we're 
their pilot to support those conservation efforts. So our visits will actually encourage uh, the locals to pay more attention. But this isn't actually an ibis, as you might imagine. This is a savanna nightjar, which actually lives um, on the forest floor. It's a large nightjar, which I could never find, but local guides have seemed to be able to find them with ease. I don't know how they do it sometimes. Um, as we move around um, Cambodia, we move further east, and as we do so, the terrain changes. We start seeing different bits of wildfowl, such as spot-billed ducks, which are a flocking flight. And we start seeing some wonderful insects as well, such as this clipper. And uh, basically this clipper is, is bigger than the size of my hand. So a rather wonderful, large butterfly. Uh, of definitely uh, a favorite of mine uh, is the Tokai gecko, um, which surely must be one of the biggest geckos in the world, if not the largest. Uh, it's so big that it actually eats other geckos. Um, wonderful creatures that uh, we tend to see normally at our, at our abode, wherever we are staying. And in the daytime, uh, if you're disturbing the daytime, see how the eyes change and the pupils just simply disappear. Um, but this, uh, these, these rather large beasts, which can be up to about a foot long, uh, marvellous things to see. So a nice distraction from the, the culture and the birds. Talking of culture, this is a Cambodian tractor. So it's only got two wheels plus a trailer. Uh, it's a very typical sight with this um, sort of... Uh, a big engine spouting out all sorts of fumes as it comes along, but you can definitely hear them coming. And um, yeah, and the locals are quite a bright, uh, very, very uh, pleasant uh, group of people, I have to say, the Cambodians, very polite, um, very, um, very sort of, um, um, very, very laid back. So you, you, you always have a really nice opportunity to, to see some of the locals. Well, this is a bird that's seen, that's seen by very few people, which is the wire-winged duck, but uh, the itinerary does provide an opportunity, albeit a slim opportunity, to see the wire-winged duck, which is now extremely rare, um, but really Cambodia provides the only real opportunity of seeing this, this de declining species, which sadly will probably be um, extinct in the next 30 years. We have an opportunity of, uh, it's the only time we actually will be doing any camping on the, on the tour, is when we actually stay in a tent for one night in order to get close to the vulture restaurant, and this is a red-headed vulture, which is one of three species which are in particular decline in Asia. And so Nature Trek's um, uh, opportunity of going out there actually provides an, uh, more money and more resources um, to ensure that these rare vultures are, are preserved and looked after. Um, so here you have the red-headed vultures together with um, a white-backed uh, vulture. And as you can see, which is the, the one on the left-hand side with the long black head, uh, is a slender bill vulture. So slender bill vulture on the left hand side, white backed, and then red headed. Um, and then on the next shot, you just got two species, which is a slender bill and the white one together, and a poor cow. Um, Asiatic green beaters, got lots of very bright and beautiful birds in Cambodia. There are every turn, really. And if you're into your lizards, we do see quite a number of, of species. And this is one of the butterfly uh, lizards that actually extends its pouches out with such lovely bright colors. A whole range of different butterflies are uh, an option. I didn't actually identify this one specifically to a species, uh, but this I believe is a peacock pansy. And certainly in sort of the forest areas, we get an opportunity to see some really nice insects, including this very large and beautiful yellow moth. We move over onto the east to look at the river Mekong. And the reason we go here is to try and see the uh, Mekong wagtail and also the Irrawaddy dolphin, which are, are important parts of the itinerary. Um, and when we're out there, this is, the, this is the Mekong wagtail, which is believed to be restricted to the river Mekong and its tributaries only. Uh, it's a very um, distinctive species, uh, quite like, like a really large black and white pie wagtail, but a, spe a specific species, which isn't quite an endemic, but is a near endemic. Irrawaddy dolphins, um, if, you're, if you know about your river dolphins, you'll know that they tend to be quite shy in animals, but every tour that we actually did out there, we saw the, the dolphins with comparative ease. So, um, so if you want to see a beast like this, um, it's a great place to come and do that, as well as see the mighty Mekong, of course. In this particular area, we start seeing a few different bits of wildlife, such as this whip scorpion, which looks fearsome, but is actually quite harmless. And while we're over in the east, we actually have the opportunity of going to the Dak Dam Highlands and up against the Vietnamese border, uh, which I don't think any other tour group goes to this part of the world at all. Um, this, this provides a completely different flavour and gives us an opportunity to get into some, some more different primates, such as the black shank du langur, which is the one that's actually pictured here, albeit fairly distantly. And uh, when we are in our comfortable lodgings and our comfortable hotels, we sometimes get the odd visitor, such as a large tree frog, 
which I think makes a lot, lot more entertainment than just watching TV. And we did actually have an option of, uh, we came across the, this warbler on one of our, one of our tours, uh, which has been identified as a Closs leaf warbler. And it would appear that um, uh, they've just started to, to move into, into Cambodia from, from Vietnam. So this was a, a bird that we weren't anticipating seeing. So my apologies for the quality of the shot, but it's a small philosopher's warbler that lives up into the, into the canopy. Uh, for photographers, there is an opportunity with, with blue skies um, to get some reasonable shots of birds other than just water birds. Uh, this was Jordan's Baza um, that came over and doing a bit of display over one of the Dakdam Highland areas we're at. And the black eagle was uh, an unexpected find, but um, a bird that also came nice and close. And we got some reasonable shots of that as well. The endemic, probably the only true endemic for Cambodia bird wise, um, is the Cambodian tailor bird, which is what this bird is. Um, there is a partridge in the south, which is to be an endemic now as well, simply because its range has become more restricted and there are lots of other near endemics. But if you certainly want to see some of the um, iconic birds associated with Cambodia, which you can really only see there, I haven't even mentioned Bengal florican, which is getting very difficult to see in other countries now, but there is a reasonably stable population and we would go to see that and we see, we see them every time. And I've mentioned the, the ibises and some of the storks, but... Uh, it isn't just about um, uh, everything that we can see there. It's also, it's also remembering the holiday. And you don't have to dress up to go to, to Cambodia. This is the standard dress. Um, so if you're wearing pyjamas, you want to wear pyjamas all day. This lady was actually tending her sheep. Uh, but it was fairly typical of um, the Cambodia's very, very laid back style of life and very, very pleasant. And the culture, both modern and historically, um, certainly enriches our, our trip out there as we enjoy the wildlife.